Dear viewers, in the previous video, we have seen the external features and blood supply of heart. In today's video, we will see the internal features of heart, that is internal features of each of the chambers. So first, let us see the internal features of right atrium. So just to revise on, what is the extent of the right atrium? Right atrium extends from the level of the third costal cartilage, that is at the opening of the superior vena cava, to the level of the sixth costal cartilage, that is the opening of the inferior vena cava. We have a pinna like extension on the andro superior part of the right atrium that extends in front of the ascending iota. This pinna like appendage is called as the right auricle. So, now let us see the internal features. To see the internal features, an inverted L shaped incision is put along the anterior wall of the right atrium and the anterior wall is reflected towards the right side. So, this reveals the internal features of right atrium. So, what is most classically seen here is that the internal feature of right atrium looks rough on one part whereas it looks smooth on the other part. So, that means the right atrium consists of an anterior rough part also called as the right atrium proper that develops from the embryological atrium proper whereas a posterior smooth part which is developed from the absorbed part of the right horn of sinus venosus and hence the posterior smooth part is called as sinus venarum. What separates the rough part from the smooth part? We can see a crest, a myocardial crest here which is covered by a layer of endocardium. This smooth elevation is called as crista terminalis. Corresponding to crista terminalis, on the outside is a sulcus that extends from the superior vena caval orifice that is here to the level of the inferior vena caval orifice that is here. This sulcus is called as sulcus terminalis. At the upper end of the sulcus terminalis, close to the opening of the superior vena cava, that is somewhere in this region, sub-epicardially, we have a part of the conducting system of heart, which is called as the sinoatrial node or the SA node, which is the pacemaker of the heart. So, let us see the features of the crista terminalis. So, as we can see here, this is the opening of the superior vena cava. This is the opening of the superior vena cava we can see here and this is the opening of the inferior vena cava. Extending from the superior vena cava opening to the inferior vena cava opening is this linear elevation. This is called crista terminalis. It develops from the superior part of the right venous valve of sinus venosus. What are the features of the rough anterior part of the right atrium? Oh, placed at right angles to the crista terminalis, we can see some parallel fibers or muscular ridges which are covered by endocardium. These ridges are called as musculi pectinati. As you can see here, the interior of right atrium also contains musculi pectinati. The importance of these pectinate muscles is that if there is stagnation of blood flow in the right atrium, it tends to stagnate between these muscles and it can form a thrombus. And if this thrombus gets dislodged, then it can move into the right ventricle and then into the pulmonary trunk to reach the lung. This can result in fatal pulmonary thromboembolism. So that completes the features of the rough anterior part. So in front of the crista terminalis, we have the musculi pectinati. What are the features of the smooth posterior part of the right atrium? Now, the post posterior part, that is the smooth posterior part of the right atrium or the sinus venarum, contains mainly opening of two important veins. So, the first one is opening on the upper posterior part of the right atrium. This is the superior vena caval orifice. The superior vena cava carries blood from the upper extremities and the head and neck area and it drains into the right atrium and this is not guarded by any valve. This is the opening of the inferior vena cava. The inferior vena cava carries the oxygenated blood from the lower extremities into the right atrium. 
As we can see here, there is a rudimentary valve that guards the inferior vena cava orifice. This valve is also called as the eustachian valve. It has an embryological significance. In the embryological fetal period, it will continue or it will direct the blood that comes through the inferior vena cava through the foramen ovale into the left atrium. It later becomes rudimentary. In front and to the left of the inferior vena cava opening, we can see another opening. This is the opening of the coronary sinus. And it is also guarded by a valve. This is called as the Thibetian valve. So, the crista terminalis, the rudimentary eustachian valve and the Thibetian valve, all together they develop from the right venous valve of sinus venosus. Now, the next important thing that we can see in the right atrium is what you can see here. This is the right side of the interatrial septum. The most classical thing that can be seen in the interatrial septum is this depression. So, you can appreciate very clearly that this is an oval depression. So, this oval depression is called as fossa ovalis. Fossa ovalis develops from the septum prima. So, we can also see that there is a very prominent margin for the fossa ovalis, very prominent anteriorly, superiorly and posteriorly and it is faint on the inferior aspect. So, this ring-like surrounding of the fossa ovalis is called as annulus ovalis or limbus fossa ovalis. The limbus fossa ovalis develops from the lower free margin of the septum secundum. Located superior to the fossa ovalis is a small elevation. This elevation is created by the right posterior aortic sinus which is a non-coronary sinus. So when it gets filled with blood, it creates a projection on the superior part of the interatrial septum just above the fossa ovalis. This elevation is called as torus aorticus. Now we can see a small area here. This triangular area is called as the triangle of coke which is bounded in front by the attachment of the septal leaflet of the tricuspid valve. So this is the tricuspid orifice or the right atrioventricular orifice that communicates right atrium to the right ventricle. This is the septal leaflet of the tricuspid valve. This is the septal leaflet of the tricuspid valve and this is the attachment of the septal leaflet of the tricuspid valve. So the septal leaflet, the coronary sinus opening and this small elevation that can be seen here. This is a subendocardial ridge that starts from the central fibrous body towards the coronary and IVC opening. This is called as the tendon of Todaro. So, so, bounded by tendon of Todaro, coronary sinus opening and attachment of the septal leaflet of the tricuspid valve is a triangular area. This triangular area is called as the triangle of coach. The, important of the tri importance of the triangle of coach is that just beneath the endocardium in this area we will have the AV node and in front of it and to the left we will have the upper part of the membranous part of interventricular septum. So, to summarize the features of the right atrium, it extends from the level of third costal cartilage to the sixth costal cartilage. On the outside is a sulcus terminalis that connects the superior vena cava opening to the inferior vena cava opening. When we open the right atrium, we can see a rough part which is formed by musculi pectinati that starts at right angles to the crista terminalis. And then we have the smooth part which is also called as the sinus venarum which mainly contains the opening of superior vena cava, opening of inferior vena cava, opening of the coronary sinus and features of the right side of the interatrial septum which contains fossa ovalis that develops from septum primum, limbus fossa ovalis that develops from the lower free margin of septum secundum, torus aorticus which is represented by the non-coronary aortic sinus and the triangle of coach that contains the AV node. Thank you.